In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the refrigeration and start components that go along with refrigeration systems. Now, start components are the devices that take the start winding or the start capacitor out of the circuits. Start components come in two types. You have capacitors and start relays. There's another term we have to talk about first because it comes into play here. It's called back EMF or back electromotive force or back voltage. Whenever you spin a magnet in a coil of wires, you create the voltage. Back EMF is the excess voltage that is created in a motor. It's a very difficult thing to measure as it's not in the same frequency as the line voltage being applied. Back EMF produced in coils will cause the current to decrease. The purpose of a start relay is to remove the start circuit of a single phase compressor motor at 75% of the full motor's RPM. The sequence of operation on, all, on most start relays is the thermostat closes. The current goes way up as the motor starts. This is called locked rotor amps. The capacitor jolts the start winding as it discharges. The motor starts turning, creates back EMF, which creates resistance and lowers the amperage to full load amps. The back EMF, which is created, helps remove the start winding from the circuit. The start winding or start capacitor must be taken out electrically or it will burn out. Start windings are made of a thinner gauge wire than run windings and cannot handle the excessive current. The only purpose of a motor start winding is to get the rotor in the motor to start turning. We have four types of st start relays we need to learn about. First is the current relay. It's a coil, t one of them is a coil type. Then I also have a current relay hot wire type, I have a current relay solid state type, and I have a voltage relay which is the potential type. The current coil relay is a current sensitive relay that energizes on locked rotor amps, the LRA, of the motor. Locked rotor amps are much higher than the full motor load amps, FLA. The LRA is the amperage a motor draws when it is powered but not turning. The LRA is about six times higher than the full rating. This is an example of a current coil relay. Okay, you have a stationary contact, you have some pin connectors to put it on the compressor, you have a spring, and you have a solenoid coil at the bottom. The FLA of, is the amperage of the motor when it's first operational and running at a hundred percent of its rated RPM. If the FLA is too high, things you want to check is the condenser, refrigerant, or the compressor might be going bad. The current coil relay will de-energize when the motor reaches its FLA rating. Usually it's a second or two after the motor starts. There are two configurations of the current coil relay, one's with a start capacitor and one's without a start capacitor. This is an example of a wiring diagram without a start capacitor. Now the box, the dotted line box you see on the slide is anything within the current coil relay. Your connectors without a start capacitor is L, R, and S. Okay, now R connects to a terminal called the M terminal, okay? So on the relay itself, you will see L, M, and S. M basically stands for main. Okay, so line comes through the thermostat, con connects to the L terminal. The R winding connects to the M terminal. The S winding connects to the S terminal for line, main, or run, and start. Now, if we have a start capacitor, your current relay is a slightly has some different terminals. L connects to two and comes to the start capacitor, which is then connected to one. M and S, okay, your run connects to M, your S connects to three. So your start capacitor is going to connect to two terminals, the two, which is where line is, and the one. That puts your start capacitor in series electrically with your start winding. 
you'll notice here, and we'll talk more about this, that the that this is the one load that goes in series with your run winding. This is the coil that controls this set of contacts. Okay, this coil is made of an extremely heavy gauge metal and does not have a voltage drop. It's strictly measuring current. Most types of these mount directly on the compressor motor terminals. The relay can only be mounted right side up because gravity matters because the contacts are not spring loaded. You have to look for the designation top on the relay to make sure you're mounting these in the right direction. These current coils are most often used on motors that were one horsepower or less. They have one set of normally open contacts. The coil of the relay is always connected in series with the run winding of the compressor. When the thermostat closes, the LRA of the compressor will create enough magnetism through the relay to push up or close the normally open contacts. The coil resistance is close to zero ohms, which allows all the voltage to be applied to the compressor run winding even though there are two loads in series. As the motor starts to turn, back EMF starts building up in the motor windings. The generated back EMF drops the current drawdown to FLA and the reduction in current de-energizes the relay coil. The motor will run on the run winding only. The best method for troubleshooting these, motor, these coils is to use an ohm meter. With the relay right side up, the coil should read zero ohms and the contact should read infinite. With the relay upside down, the coil should be zero ohms and the contact should read zero ohms. When finding a replacement part, use the model number and manufacturer of the compressor. The most common symptoms of a bad relay is a hum click sort of noise. The first time you hear it, you'll know it. The hum is the motor starting to turn or trying to turn. The click is the motor overload opening. Nothing will happen and it will go through this on cycles. The next one that we're going to talk about, again, it's a current draw type relay. It's called the hot wire relay. It's an older design. You very seldom see them anymore, but you have to recognize when you see it. It's been replaced by the current coil or solid state type. It's used on fractional horsepower motors, which is motors less than one horsepower. Hot wire relay looks like this on a wire diagram. Okay, it uses the L terminal, which comes into a bimetal um, contact. As the bimetal opens, in other words, heats up, it will pull itself away from the start winding on this contact right here in the center. And if it heats up too much, in other words, if it goes into an overload condition, it will pull itself away from the run winding. So the hot wire is both a start component and a motor overload. It contains two sets of normally closed contacts. It operates therm thermally by current flow that creates heat through a small wire. The heat will warp a bimetal contact, which opens it, and it breaks the path to the start winding. Because of the second contact in there, the relay has its own overload protection. If the motor gets stuck in LRA, the second contact will heat up and open as well. This, this type of relay does not need a motor overload switch. Problems with if the relay starts going bad, replace it with a solid state relay. The solid state relay is another current relay as well. Solid state means non-mechanical device, no moving parts. The relay is also known as a thermistor type relay or PTC relay. A thermistor is a device that changes its resistance value as current passes through it. This is a thermistor diagram. Okay, it's a, basically a resistor with an arrow through it. PTC stands for positive temperature coefficient. The higher the temperature of the device, the less efficiently current can pass through the device. Solid state relays are used mostly on fractional under one horsepower motors. This is an example of a PTC relay. So the characteristics of it is that the relay is made of a conductive ceramic disc. 
The ceramic disc is about the size of a dime and has a very low resistance when at room temperature, will be about three to five ohms. When the current passes through the disc, the resistance rapidly increases to a value of about 80,000 ohms. So again, solid state relay just goes between the R and the S terminal, three to five ohms at room temperature. It does require a motor overload. So the sequence of operation is the thermostat closes, the motor achieves LRA. The current heats the relay at about 80k ohms of resistance. The start winding is effectively removed from the circuit with all power flowing through the lower resistance of the run winding. We have types, we have three different types of solid state relays. I have a plug-in type, I have a two-wire type, and a five-wire type. The plug-in diagram is really easy. Again, anything within the dotted lines is found in the device. Okay, we connect line voltage to the L terminal and R and S. It plugs right onto the side of the compressor terminals. The two-wire diagram, okay, is wired in series with the start winding. You basically physically make the connections. You put it in series with the start winding. The five-wire type includes an overload. This is by far the one that I think is the, that I like the best, and also you see as replacements for most of the current coils. L comes into LL, S connects to S, R connects to R, C and N connect to your common and neutral. The overload is included. Sometimes you will see a capacitor put between S and the start winding. The two and five wire types are field replacement types. They can be used to replace the plug-in, the current coil, and the hot wire. Make sure you check the horsepower ratings before using a replacement. The best method for troubleshooting is an ohm meter. When at room temperature, look for three to five ohms of resistance. If the solid state relay is warm, look for a high resistance. So after the solid state relay, we move into the voltage sensing or the potential relays. The voltage sensing or potential relays use an electromagnetic type relay, just like uh, any relay we've already talked about. Potential relays always have a start capacitor. Most of the time there will also be a run capacitor. Now, uh, this is what's found in a potential or along with a potential relay. Diagram A is your potential relay. B is your run capacitor, and C is your start capacitor. Potential relay schematic is actually relatively simple. You have three terminals, one, two, and five. Between the one and the two terminals, there's a normally closed contact. Between the two and the five terminals, you have your um, relay coil itself. The coil has a resistance of 6,000 to 12,000 ohms. Between 1 and 5, you should have a measurement between 6 and 12,000 ohms. Between 1 and 2, you should have a measurement of 0 ohms when the relay is not connected and in your hands. The coil voltage is generated by the back EMF across the start winding. It's used on compressor motors from half to 10 horsepower. So it uses it has a very wide range of comp of motor types. Potential relays and start capacitor provide a very high starting torque. Anything that needs power beyond this point requires a third phase compressor. So this is the final relay that we can use for anything that's not three phase that has a very high starting torque. The wiring terminal one goes to the start capacitor. Terminal 2 connects to the start winding. Terminal 3 connects to the compressor common or the motor side, load side of the motor overall overload. Sometimes the relay will come equipped with terminals 3, 4, and 6. These are dummy terminals used for junction points only. 1, 2, and 5 are the ones you have to be worried about. So a potential with only a start cap wires into the circuit by connecting the start cap to the line to terminal 1, terminal 2 goes to the S terminal, terminal 5 goes to the motor side of the overload. Do not connect this to the neutral side of the overload. 
potential relays with a run and a start capacitor. Okay, you are going to connect the um, terminal 1 to, again, the start capacitor, which connects to line. Terminal 2 goes to both the start winding and the run capacitor that's connected to line and the run winding. Terminal 5, again, goes to the common of the motor on the motor or load side of the overload. Potential relay with only a start cap and with a run cap. Two diagrams you want to know and be able to draw. To troubleshoot a potential relay, use your own meter. Test the contacts between 1 and 2. This should be 0 ohms. Test the contacts between 2 and 5. This should be a very high resistance. Complete the tests. 1 to 5 should be a high resistance as the coil and the contacts are getting checked together. If you do not get these readings, you have a bad potential relay. Sometimes on very high microfarad capacitor, there is a bleed resistor across the terminal. This is designed to purge the voltage out of the capacitor. Do not trust the bleed resistor. Always bleed that capacitor yourself. If the start winding is open, the motor overload will trip. If the run winding is open, the motor will not start, but the overload will trip. A hard start kit is a combination of a capacitor and a start relay. Refrigeration hard start kits contain a solid state relay and do not have a microfarad rating. They cannot exceed half horsepower. Air conditioning hard start kits contain a potential relay and can range any place from a half to five horsepower. So start components are found on any solid state or um, split phase motor where you have to take the um, start winding out of the circuit. We started off by talking about the oldest type, which is the hard start or the um, hot wire. We had talked about the current coil, which you see very frequently still being used. We went to the solid state and we talked about the potential relay. Potential relays are mainly used in heavy horsepower motors and air conditioning.